online dating has become a pretty common way to meet new people. While you may know that dangers come along with meeting up with someone you've only spoken to online, few people expect that it will happen to them. But both men and women have fallen victim to criminals using dating websites to find new victims. Many lose money, safety, and even their own lives. Number 5. For more than two years, Derek Patterson had been meeting up with men that he met online. But it was more than company and romantic encounters he was after. On 21 occasions, he allegedly stole money and phones from his would-be dates, often threatening them or causing physical harm if they didn't do what he wanted. In November of 2019, Patterson met up with his first victim, according to the FBI. He had been chatting with the man on Grindr, and on November 3rd, his victim invited him to his Los Angeles home. It didn't take long for the meetup to go wrong for the victim. As soon as they entered the bedroom, Patterson allegedly demanded money. The victim gave him $20, but Patterson wanted more. When the victim refused, Patterson allegedly attacked him with pepper spray and fled from the scene. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be the last time Patterson pulled the same scheme. According to the FBI, he would connect with 20 more victims using the Grinder app. After they had invited him to their hotel room or to their own home, the horror story would begin. Patterson allegedly would threaten the victims with a variety of weapons, and on many occasions went through with the threats if his victims still stood up to him. One time, a victim tried to release his dog for protection, and Patterson supposedly threatened to turn his weapon to the animal too. This same victim eventually fled from his own home to get away from Patterson. Patterson then went around the man's house, and a security camera filmed Patterson stealing objects before he fled the scene of the crime. On one occasion, early in his crime spree, the police were called and Patterson was actually arrested. However, police claimed they didn't have enough evidence to charge the man. He would go on to commit more than a dozen crimes and stole thousands of dollars from his victims. At least once, he stole hundreds of dollars from the parents of one of his victims, claiming to be their son in need of money. He was finally caught after the FBI investigation in March of 2022. But police believe there might be more to this story than they currently know. It's believed Patterson may be working with another criminal. On one occasion, he threatened a victim until the man agreed to take him to an ATM. While the victim got dressed, Patterson allegedly used his phone to call someone else and tell them what was going on. The FBI has urged anybody who might have been another victim of the criminals to get in touch. Number 4. When it comes to criminals using online dating to find their victims, Simon Leviev may be the most famous. Leviev, who was born as Shulman Hayut, stole millions of dollars from women across Europe and earned himself the nickname of the Tinder Swindler. Hayut was already a criminal when his most famous series of crimes began. He was wanted in Israel where he had cashed checks that he had stolen from a family he had been working for. After that crime emerged, he fled to Scandinavia. There, he conned three women out of thousands of dollars and was imprisoned for two years. When he was released in 2017, he changed his name to Simon Levy. But this wasn't so he could turn his life around and start fresh. It was to elevate his cons to a new level. The Lviv family is an incredibly rich Israeli family. Headed by diamond mogul Lev Levy, Hayut had no connection to the family. But in changing his name, he portrayed himself as the son of Levy and a wealthy businessman in his own right. According to Hayut, he was a single man looking for love and took to the popular dating app to find it. He connected with women and began what at first seemed like a whirlwind romance. The men were treated to a life of luxury that Hayut had apparently made for himself. He flew them on private jets for weekend getaways and brought them expensive gifts and dinners. But before long, the money would start going the other way. Typically, Hayud would tell his victim that he was in danger and that thugs, likely sent by business enemies, were after him. He would even hire people to pretend to be bodyguards and send videos of these bodyguards with fake wounds to convince the women he was in real danger. He claimed he needed to use a credit card in someone else's name in order to move untracked. The women would send credit cards in their own names and even shipped physical cash to Hayud in order to keep him safe. 
He would promise to pay the money back, but of course that would never happen. Instead, the money was used to fund his extravagant lifestyle and to con the next victim. This at least was the story portrayed in the Netflix documentary about the man, called Tinder Swindler. A number of his victims have come forward for the documentary. Many took out loans for a man that they thought was in serious danger, and have had their lives ruined by him. The Lviv family have also filed a lawsuit against him for using their name to defraud people and businesses. Hayud claims he never took money from anyone, and instead made his fortune through cryptocurrency. He was arrested in 2019 in Greece for using a fake passport, and he was extradited to Israel. He was briefly imprisoned for the Czech fraud, but was released early for good behavior, and is currently pursuing a career in show business. Number 3. When an anonymous 24-year-old New Yorker connected with a young woman on Instagram, he had no idea of the horror story that was to come. The man chatted with 22-year-old Valerie Rosario on the social media app. She was a good-looking woman who often posted photos of herself on the app, and the man grew to trust her. On February 7, 2022, he was invited to a Bronx apartment where he thought he would meet Rosario for the first time for what was described as a romantic encounter. According to the victim, he arrived at about 1 a.m. and found Rosario there. But they weren't alone for long. Three men brandishing weapons entered the apartment and attacked him. Rosario then allegedly joined in on the attack. He was placed in a bathtub with flammable liquids. For hours, the four criminals attacked him with bladed weapons and flames. After about 12 hours after the ordeal began, the victim discovered why the criminals were doing this. They used a phone with a blocked number to contact the victim's brother over FaceTime. They wore masks on the call, but made sure the brother could clearly see his sibling and what they had done to him. The sadistic criminals then demanded $100,000, and to make sure their threat was taken seriously, they attacked the victim again with a bladed weapon. Apparently, the victim's Instagram account had made the criminals believe he was very wealthy, and they had targeted him for the money. At this point, the police were contacted, but they were unable to determine where the victim was being held. They went to the drop-off point where the brother was supposed to leave the ransom, but didn't notice any suspicious individuals or the victim's car, which they believed the criminals had stolen. The victim was moved into the back of a van, covered with a blanket with tape around his nose and mouth. It was here that a police officer found him 24 hours after he was first lured to the Bronx apartment. The officer found one of the criminals with a bladed weapon held to the victim, but managed to rescue him in time. According to the officer, the victim was barely breathing and was taken to a hospital, where he thankfully made a recovery. Over the next few days, Rosario and her alleged accomplices were arrested. They've been charged with kidnapping and attempting to take the victim's life. Number 2. In mid-August 2021, Sean Ian Bruce Flintoff appeared in court, accused of stalking a woman he met online. As another local woman read the report about the court appearance, she realized the online dating horror story that she'd been living for the past four months was not an isolated occurrence. Flintoff was 35 years old when he was first arrested. In July of 2021, he met a woman using the online dating app Tinder. They began a relationship, but it wouldn't last long and in early August, the woman broke it off. It seemed Flintoff wasn't ready for the relationship to end, though. He continued to harass the woman, sending her messages and calling her up to 50 times a day for about a week. He damaged her car and house, and on the night of August 9th, left her the ominous message that he was headed outside of her home. After the creepy message, the woman contacted the police. She claimed she feared for her life, and he was arrested for stalking. Police visited Flintoff's home and began to discover the extent of his chilling crimes. Mail addressed to dozens of women was found in his home, and police believed they may also have been the victims of stalking. After the first victim came forward, more women answered an appeal for information. The first victims had been harassed by Flintoff about eight years earlier. He used Tinder and Facebook Marketplace to find women usually in their 30s, and would begin relationships with them. When these relationships didn't work out, the stalking began. 
As well as the harassing phone calls and text messages, Flintoff would send packages, deliveries, and people to the homes of his victims to damage their property. More than 20 women came forward with their own creepy stories about Flintoff. And when the case was posted online, many more mentioned that he had tried to get in touch with them via Facebook, but they had ignored him. Flintoff admitted to the stalking, but his lawyer claimed he was unable to deal with the breakups after he was cheated on by a woman and discovered her baby wasn't his child. He's currently undergoing a psychiatric assessment. Number 1. When a young man connected with 21-year-old Nika Nikubit on a dating website Plenty of Fish, it's likely the worst he was expecting was to not get along with her. She was a good-looking and intelligent young woman, and while at university had been a cheerleader and on the debate team, to him she seemed like a good match. Things went well as they chatted on the app and the two decided to meet at a Las Vegas hotel. He brought alcohol with him and they drank in the room for a while before they both turned to what they'd come to the hotel for. Nikubin turned out the lights and told her date she wanted him to wear a blindfold. Up until that point, her date hadn't noticed anything out of the ordinary with Nikubin, so he obliged. She covered his eyes and he felt her lean over him towards the nightstand. Moments later, there was a sharp pain in his neck. The date pushed Nikubin away from him and realized that she had struck him with a sharp object. Nikubin fled from the room but only went as far as the hotel reception desk where she confessed to attacking the man. Despite the wound, he was well enough to call the police and she was arrested for the horrifying act. Nikubin admitted to police that she had attacked him and didn't try to claim self-defense. Instead, she said she wanted revenge for actions by the US military, specifically an operation that had taken out an Iranian military general. She claimed she didn't want to take the man's life just to injure him, but given the location of the wound, she was charged for attempting to take his life. It seems the unidentified man got a lucky escape and avoided what was almost a tragic online dating story. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But my name is Ty Knott and I'll catch you guys in the next video.